Tell us what the next genre is going to be that we can look forward to and feel like we know what we're talking about. Well, trance, trance music is one genre of dance music. Yeah. There's so many different styles of and dance music. And what's coming next? Uh, I mean, house and techno have been buzzing for a bit now, and they, and they still are, you know, where um, there was big room house, you know, the massive tracks that were crossing over to the mainstream. That was big for the past five years, and now it's split up into, you know, house, techno, and uh, even breakbeats are coming back a little bit. Are you worried at all that the world is a little over festival? The world is definitely over conference, right? We can right. go to a conference every day. Festivals are becoming more and more pervasive for the reasons that Walter highlighted, right? It's, it's much more profitable than streaming music. But Burning Man, to me, has jumped the shark. Like, we're, we're over the edge. How do you maintain <laughs> this? How do I know this isn't a fad? Well, it's, I can tell you that we're growing every day, you know, not only are we growing within the United States, but we're growing internationally. Um, you know, next year we're going to be in Japan, we're going to India, uh, we just did Brazil this, this past year, and we're selling out events and adding more here in the States. But with all those festivals, do you have to compete for talent? Do you have to pay the performers even more? I mean, do your cost inputs go up as you see more and more of these occurring? Um, you know, uh, it does. It is competitive in some markets. Some markets are wide open. Some markets don't need another festival. You know, it really depends on where you are. But it's definitely not going anywhere. And uh, you know, our 20 year anniversary is in five weeks know, in it's Vegas. 20 years. Congratulations! And, That's great. You know, we're we're already thinking about the next 10 years, what we're going to be doing, and how we're going to use technology to um, enhance the experience. You know, it's, a, it's an exciting time what, for festivals. What have, uh, you know, people like Tiesto done for this kind of movement Ooh. and the popular Tiesto <laughs> DJ? Right. Guy gets it's paid like, yeah. how, much does he, how much does he get paid Glad to do here. a show now? I mean, tons of money, right? He gets a lot of money. You know, he gets paid well. He deserves it, though. He's drawing in the big crowds. But that's what I'm saying. Like, what sort of influence ha has he had um, and well-known sort of DJs that are in this kind of space done for, for Electronic music, house music, things like that. I mean, and bringing it back popular again. Yeah, I mean, the, the artists that are making great music, you know, uh, are the ones definitely taking it to the next level um, and helping people understand it more, especially those who have collaborated with artists that aren't dance music. You know, that was happening a lot. Mm -hmm. It started about five years ago. Black, Black Eyed Peas with David Guetta was really when that big crossover started going on. That sounds like a great combo. I love that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's that's really when you know uh, things started really blowing up, and more people that were outside of you know just the dance music culture started opening their ears to the music, and that's still happening now. A moment ago, you talked about technology taking to the next level. What's the new big tech thing that'll happen? Uh, virtual reality. Oh, I have wow. about I have a meeting with virtual reality probably every other you know I could have one every day, but um, got to focus on the core business of course. But it's you know, there's, there's, you know, what can you do at a live event with virtual reality? How can you enhance the experience? Do you, you know, do, so. Do you have sponsors? Who are they? We do have sponsors. You haven't mentioned them yet. This is, we're already six minutes into this. You should have mm -hmm. had them at the top. Uh, <laughs> I'm teasing you. Who well, you know, we don't do sponsorships um, the way they used to at festivals. It's about them bringing. Um, enhancing the experience. We don't brand our stages. Our, our events are about EDC and everything that that means. Um, but, we'll, you know, 7UP is a great sponsor, for instance. And they'll set up a stage and they'll actually hire artists and set up, do a whole setup where you walk in and you're in this, it's our seventh stage at EDC. So they'll do, you know, they'll, they'll enhance the experience by, by doing special things like that. You'll get how many people this weekend? This weekend, we'll do about 75,000 over the two days. And then in, at EDC, we do in Las Vegas, we do 420,000 over three days. Wow. Has, has running this business made you rich? It's okay to say yes. In fact, it's better to say yes. <laughs> I'm very happy, so yes, I'm, I'm doing well. <laughs> what are the tips for somebody who wants to get into the business? Um, you know, you have to be passionate. It's, it's hard, it's not a party throwing a party. You know, it's a lot of work and there are no sh shortcuts. You know, it took a, you know, it's, it's, and you need a great team behind you, of course. But, uh, you were a club kid, party promoter, or a, growing, you know, in your uh, younger raves. years? In the 90s. Yeah. yeah, I was a, I started off as a raver just going to warehouse parties and being a fan. And then when it, it collapsed, 
and there was no more events to go to, I said, you know, I can't not have this in my life, and that's why I started. Right. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.